If I had to choose one of the most pivotal years in my life, it would have to be the beginning of 2018. That year started off pretty crappy and it ended pretty crappy as well. There was not a lot of good or positivity that came my way that year or so I thought. That year was filled with pain, anguish, feelings of losing myself and not understanding life at all. I had started to feel as alone as I felt like back in grade two, which was pretty alone in case you haven't seen our other videos and uh, come to find out that, you know, I didn't have any friends. <laughs> also, I don't think I'm that good at keeping friends, but I know that that's because of a lot of insecurity, like on my end, which sometimes ends up sabotaging relationships because I used to have a tendency of engaging in self-destructive habits, which eventually led to termination of various sorts of relationships because I didn't know how to maintain these people like my friends. I didn't know how to maintain these friendships and it was just a lot of work for me to do. I thought at that time that I would rather be alone than have to try and make something work if I didn't want to make the effort. And to be honest, like, I feel like a lot of people are like that. Hence the pandemic of ghosting is very much evident in our generation. <laughs> I've known at least a handful of people who have been ghosted or have done the ghosting themselves. And I'm pretty sure we all have done it at some point. But honestly, it's such a harmful mindset, especially if you are really close with a person. I understand the need to have space from a person, but that can be asked for in a respectful manner. And if the person doesn't get the message, then like you let them know already. So there's no one really to blame in that case in my opinion. But to go someone without even telling them why and giving no sort of explanation, that's a little messed up and I'm guilty of it. So that's one of the main things that 2018 taught me. In order for any relationship to work, there needs to be open communication because that's the only way problems get solved. You need to have a fruitful dialogue. You need to have open conversation with another person. I would say that I did not used to be good at all at communicating with other people, but I'm working on it. In the past, yes, I had lots of issues with communicating and I was also attracting lots of people who also had difficulty communicating. So of course these relationships didn't end well, but but on the flip side, 2018 also taught me to be independent because you cannot rely on anyone else in this world. Everything depends on you. All your choices are yours. So please make sure that you are consciously engaged and are aware of the decisions that you make because at the end of the day, they will either make you or break you. And I learned this the super hard way through lots of tough firsthand life experiences. But I guess that if I didn't go through that, then this knowledge may not have made such a huge lasting impression on me because I have a lot of evidence, you know, firsthand experience from my own life where it had been my bad decisions that caused bad things to happen. It's like karma's real, you know, you, you do bad, like bad things are gonna come to you. Of course, I'm not saying that every single thing that happened to me was my fault, but when you are in negative circumstances and feel hopeless, helpless, and lost, it can be very hard to maintain a positive outlook on life. It's only when I started learning about things like the law of attraction, manifestation, and the self-fulfilling prophecy that I thought to myself, okay, like, why don't I take what I'm learning here, what I'm reading here, and apply it to my real life? Why don't I try to shift my perspective? I mean, I had nothing to lose. I felt like my life was probably as bad as it was going to get. So what the heck? Why not try to manifest? Why not attempt to dream again? And I realized that this was the first time that I wasn't asking Allah or God for help but I was asking the universe for help. And that was weird because I had stopped asking anyone. Like I stopped praying because I stopped believing, I guess. But it was different. It's a different feeling praying 
to like the universe than it is praying to like a god, like a religious god. And somehow this switch caused me to start believing again because it was on my own terms, not because I was following strict guidelines on what to eat, what to wear, what to look like because I realized that it was extreme control and perfectionism in all aspects that causes something as harmful as an eating disorder. It's overwhelming pressure and anxiety that causes illnesses in the body. And that's why I stopped believing in like the Judeo-Christian Islamic version of a god and started paying more attention to the universe. All of this happened one day on December. 2019 when I decided to purchase a book on Amazon. <laughs> Something that I hadn't done since 2015 and it was only when I returned to my old true friends books that I found a sense of community again. Community doesn't always have to be found in a physical person. I have found many communities myself through books, podcasts, TikTok, and especially YouTube videos. So thank you to all of you guys who are part of our community. I cannot wait to see more of you and to grow into an even bigger community filled with lots of love and light.